how heme is being catabolized so the first thing is that it takes place in three organ system the first organ system is the reticuloendothelial system in the reticuloendothelial system inside the microsomes that is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum there is an enzyme system and that is called as microsomal heme oxygenase system this microsomal heme oxygenase system converts heme to first you can see that it first form biliverdin now this when this biliverdin is formed we can see that for this enzyme nadph is required molecular oxygen is required plus you understand that this is the only step in our body where carbon monoxide is synthesized endogenously exogenous carbon monoxide you know when we are exposed to carbon monoxide that's possible but endogenously carbon monoxide is synthesized only in this step so this is how biliverdin is formed now we know that this biliverdin is next converted to what is called as bilirubin now bilirubin is a yellow colored compound and that enzyme is biliverdin reductase so that reductase enzyme also require nadph so you can see that the heme is converted to bilirubin in uh, by two enzymes in the organ system which is called as the reticuloendothelial system now it goes to this bilirubin is bound to albumin now this albumin bound bilirubin is transported in the blood so through the blood it is going to the next organ system so that is what is written over here you can see that from the reticuloendothelial system the albumin bound bilirubin is reaching the second organ system and that is called as the liver now in the liver what happens to this bilirubin there are three major steps in the bilirubin so the first thing is that the bilirubin bound albumin is taken up into the liver cells now when that uptake is called that is called uptake and uh, once that uptake is taken place the albumin is not going into the cell the albumin is detached from the albumin bilirubin complex only bilirubin is entering into the cells now once this bilirubin is entering into the cell it always prevents the regurgitation of the bilirubin back to the blood so this is prevented by binding the bilirubin with uh, other proteins so that is called as the intracellular binding so once it is uptaken the next it goes to the second step inside the liver cell and that is called as conjugation so when the step of conjugation is taking place we need another compound and that is called glucuronic acid so by combining with glucuronic acid we can see that what is formed is a conjugated bilirubin so you can see there there is how this is how conjugated bilirubin is formed and what is the enzyme required here it is udp glucuronyl transferase that is ugt is the enzyme required in the formation of conjugated bilirubin now this conjugated bilirubin is ready to get secreted so the third step it is progressing to the third step that is secretion this is an active process whereby the conjugated bilirubin is secreted and to the bile duct so for this active process you can see the conjugated bilirubin is being secreted for this active process we need some transporters and these transporters are called as the multi drug resistant protein 2 or it is also called multi specific organic anion transporter that is mrp2 or moat so with the help of these uh, transporters conjugated bilirubin is act actively transported and this is the rate limiting step of the whole the entire heme catabolism so now what are the fates of conjugated bilirubin which is being secreted it is going into the next organ system what is the third organ system through the bile duct it opens into the second part of the duodenum thereby it reaches the intestine so the next organ system is the intestine now what is the fate of this conjugated bilirubin so the first thing is that this conjugated bilirubin is deconjugated this conjugated bilirubin is 
again converted back to bilirubin by what is called as deconjugation and for this the enzyme is beta glucuronidase which is present in the bacteria that is present inside the intestine now what is the fate of this bilirubin this bilirubin is converted to urobilinogen this urobilinogen is what we call as ubg now what are the fates of this uh, urobilinogen majority of urobilinogen is getting converted to stercobilinogen and this stercobilinogen is the one which is you can see that majority is converted to stercobilinogen almost 80 percentage and that is what is excreted through feces and which is giving color to the feces so this is one fate of urobilinogen getting converted to stercobilinogen what then what are the other fates of urobilinogen this 20 percentage of urobilinogen is entering into the enterohepatic circulation and it reaches back the liver through the portal vein now in the liver what happens is you can see the urobilinogen is going into the liver so this is another fate of urobilinogen but on this way to this uh, liver there is something else which is happening that is a very minute amount of this urobilinogen which is going back to the liver through some portosystemic shunt is reaching the systemic circulation through the systemic circulation a very minimal amount of urobilinogen is excreted through the urine as well so you can see it is excreted through the kidney so this is how the heme is being catabolized in the three organ system the first in the reticuloendothelial system where bilirubin is formed the second is in the liver where the bilirubin is getting conjugated third is in the intestine where it is deconjugated and it is becoming urobilinogen and what were the fates of urobilinogen 80 percentage to stercobilinogen the rest to enterohepatic circulation and very minute amount it is going to the uh, systemic circulation through some portosystemic shunt you can see that and that urobilinogen is excreted through the kidney so we have seen how heme is being catabolized at uh, various organs level okay now the most important uh, disease which is associated with the heme catabolism is jaundice very very commonly asked so i will be confining only to the lab diagnosis of jaundice which is almost linked to what we have learned so first thing is this is a very important question asked for to estimate the serum bilirubin we use a chemical reaction to estimate the serum bilirubin that reaction is called as vandenberg reaction what is the principle of vandenberg reaction so in uh, vandenberg reaction when bilirubin reacts with a reagent which is called ehrlich diazo reagent a reddish purple azo compound is formed okay a reddish purple azo compound is formed when bilirubin is reacting with the ehrlich diazo reagent okay then uh, there are two types of reactions that can happen that is if the predominant fraction is the unconjugated uh, bilirubin then the unconjugated bilirubin is water insoluble so we have to extract the unconjugated bilirubin and then we are doing it so that is called as a what you call as an indirect reaction indirect reaction is like we will not get that reddish purple color immediately so after one more reaction it will give that reddish purple color so that reaction is called indirect so indirect is uh, vandenberg reaction is answered by unconjugated bilirubin so usually it is answered after it has been extracted uh, by alcohol okay so learn this as a very easy way to learn which is direct and which is indirect consonants together vowels together that is if it is a consonant like conjugated then it is direct positive right then the next is indirect if it is indirect reaction means immediate color we won't get that is by unconjugated so consonants together vowels together so what is delta bilirubin or billy protein uh, this delta bilirubin or billy protein is a conjugated bilirubin which is covalently linked to albumin so what is the problem with it the conjugated bilirubin usually the uh, conjugated bilirubin its half-life is only four hours right now if it is uh, this conjugated bilirubin is bound with albumin then its half-life is around 12 to 14 days so 
what is the problem the delta bilirubin is excreted from the body or it is cleared from the plasma very late than the conjugated bilirubin unbound which is not bound with albumin so that is the clinical significance of delta bilirubin otherwise bile protein so do you remember some of the common tests that we have done in the first mbbs uh, which uh, you might have forgotten so i'll just uh, make your memories fresh so i will just ask you i will write a name here fauchet's test what is it for it is for the presence of urine bile pigment so the bile pigment that we are expecting here is bilirubin okay so if bile pigment or bilirubin is positive it means that this bilirubin is conjugated bilirubin conjugated bilirubin okay so fauchet's test is positive uh, in the case of urine bile pigment positive and it, this is happening in conjugated bilirubin and so this is seen in obstructive jaundice it is positive in obstructive jaundice then the next test i'll give you some hint i will take two test tubes like this one is filled with distilled water the other is filled with urine now i add some powder here which are sulfur powder okay now tell me what is this this is hayes test what is it for the hayes test is like if the sulfur powder sinks to the bottom it says that there is something which has uh, uh, it is there in the urine which has decreased the surface tension so that made the sulfur sink to the bottom okay so what is the test for this is a test for bile salt bile salt has detergent like action which reduces the surface tension and hence it is sinking to the bottom then the third test is a test uh, where in a test tube there is a urine sample and to that i am adding a reagent called ehrlich reagent ehrlich reagent then the color developed is a pink color then what is this this is a test for urobilinogen urobilinogen is present highly positive in the case of hemo lytic jaundice now what about bile salt bile salt is also positive in obstructive jaundice so bilirubin uh, conjugated bilirubin and bile salt both is which are secreted through the bile if it is obstructed it comes in the urine that is the case of obstructive jaundice urobilinogen which is early test is positive it is a case of hemolytic jaundice so this is uh, a chart to differentiate between various jaundice so first is about the case of prehepatic or hemolytic jaundice so prehepatic or hemolytic jaundice is like direct bilirubin i said it is a conjugated bilirubin so if conjugated bilirubin here is normal indirect which is the unconjugated bilirubin here it is increased urine bile salt is absent bile pigment is absent because here it is unconjugated bilirubin which will not come in urine urine urobilogen is present so it is a case of hemolytic jaundice then uh, it is like a biphasic reaction where both conjugated and unconjugated is there and all these reactions can be plus or minus depending on the stage okay then it is a hepatic jaundice so hepatic it can be uh, conjugated and unconjugated both kind of things uh, mix in the case of hepatic jaundice then comes the third for a third case where you can see direct bilirubin is high so conjugated bilirubin is high indirect bilirubin is normal bile salt and bile pigment are present so obstructive urine urobilogen is absent because because of obstruction the bilirubin is not able to reach the intestine so what is it it is a case of obstructive jaundice now regarding the enzyme markers so alt and ast it is normal but alp is also normal that is hemolytic jaundice because in hemolytic jaundice there is no problem in the liver uh, there is no problem there is no obstruction also so all these enzymes will be normal what about hepatic hepatic the enzyme that is elevated is alt and ast but alp level is 
normal or slightly increased only but marked increase is for the amino transferase so that is hepatic jaundice okay then what about obstructive jaundice obstructive jaundice what is increased is alkaline phosphatase so if this is increased it says that it is a case of obstructive jaundice so this is how we differentiate between various jaundice so to conclude if you are not using your smile you are a man with a million dollars in the bank and no checkbook so ultimately why are we living here is to have a good life in on earth so if we want to enjoy the life on earth always have that positive vibe and a good smile on your face which will always radiate that positivity out of you so keep smiling and keep others happy thank you